This lesson deals with the question of how value proposition to customers change in the face of new technological possibilities and which new business models are derived from this. To this end, we will take a closer look at the definition and design of the value proposition, analyze the impact on the business model and learn about other forms of business model innovation. Let's define what a value proposition is. Namely, the description of the benefits a customer can expect from a bundle of products and services. Typical value propositions focus on the benefit, the price, the performance, risk, effort or customer roles. The value itself could have different dimensions. Functional, economical, emotional, symbolic or ethical values. In practice, the concept of value proposition is often thought to be the same as an offer to the company. The value could have different dimensions. Functional, economic, emotional, symbolic and ethical values. In practice, the concept of value proposition is often thought to be the same as an offer of the company. However, the value proposition is not about presenting specific products or services offered by the company. The value proposition is the reason why customers choose the offer made by a company rather than its competition. In other words, the value proposition is the aggregate of benefits provided by the customers using products or services. To properly define the value proposition, there are some important things to consider. The value proposition should be formulated in the language of the customer. It should clearly describe the most important benefit from the customer's point of view and, if necessary, also describe the difference compared to the competition or the current state of knowledge. In what ways does this value proposition differ from existing ones? For which target group does this customer benefit apply? What motivates customers to pay money for this value proposition? And how do price and perceived value compare to the competition? And finally, what is the useful result or outcome for the customer? The value proposition consists of a defined set of components that meet the specific needs of a particular group of customers. These elements can be either quantitative or qualitative. The elements of a quantitative nature include price, speed, efficiency, lower costs. Elements of a qualitative nature may be innovation, efficiency, design, brand, availability, convenience and utility. This will be briefly illustrated using the example of the virtual company Mobile First. Mobile First develops a smartphone application for the localization of services and resources that helps to find services providers such as a print store or places such as lecture halls with a focus on the university domain through small-scale navigation sensors for study beginners who arrive at the university first time and need to orient themselves without alternatives for indoor navigation to save students time and focus on the core job of studying. If you consider all the above points in your value proposition, you are doing it right. There are tips in the literature on how to develop good value propositions or what are the characteristics of good value propositions. Great value propositions should have the following set of features. Value propositions are embedded in a great business model and therefore hard to copy. They are focused on jobs, pains, and gains that matter to most customers, not just for a niche. They are focused on unsatisfied jobs, unresolved pains, and unrealized gains, and therefore meet the unsolved market requirements. Value propositions target only a few jobs, pains, and gains, but doing so extremely well, otherwise you will lose clear communication and the customer may get confused. 
great value propositions are going beyond functional jobs. They additionally are addressing emotional and social jobs. Emotional and social services may include things like customer support services, personalized recommendations, community building activities, and loyalty programs that incentivize repeat purchases. By offering emotional and social services, companies can differentiate themselves from competitors and build stronger relationships with their customers. They are aligned with how customers measure success. They are focusing on jobs, pains, and gains that a lot of people have or that some will pay a lot of money for. They are differentiating from the competition in terms of jobs, pains, and gains that customers care about. They focus on relevant topics. They are outperforming competition substantially at least in one dimension. Great value propositions are difficult to copy. In the digital economy, there are primarily data-driven value propositions that have taken off. Increasingly, data are considered a key strategic resource for organizations seeking to gain competitive advantage. Data are highly portable compared to more traditional resources, and they can be readily transferred to different contexts and reused for various purposes beyond their original intent. Organizations are increasingly experimenting with how data can be used in new contexts to obtain organizational benefits. Data-driven value propositions define what customer value is created based on data. There are a number of ways to pursue data-driven value propositions. For example, organizations may provide their clients with direct access to data, thereby offering them the ownership over raw data that they can reuse for their own specific purpose. This is considered the most direct means of realizing organizational benefit from data. Sometimes data are offered to clients in aggregated form. In addition to selling their data as a valuable asset, organizations can utilize data to offer new services or to enrich existing products and services. In this situation, data are the inputs for creating and enriching a value proposition. Data-based value propositions depend on the quality of the data, such as high accuracy, accessibility, auditability, credibility, consistency, completeness, integrity, interpretability, timeliness, and relevance. Google, a large part of Alphabet, is the leading global search engine provider and a multinational technology company that develops and commercializes internet-based services. Its corporate mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. The majority of its revenues and profits are generated through its advertising, namely selling targeted advertising space located next to its search engine results. Google Business is built on a set of customer value propositions, which link it to different markets that include search engine users and online advertisers. These product markets have different segments within them. For example, the search engine products, some customer segments may value speed and efficiency, while others may place more value on uncovering new information. In the online advertising space, some segments are price conscious, while others may be more quality conscious. Google offers an implicit value proposition to search engine users. They provide the most relevant results for their search queries at no monetary cost. In return, Google learns about users' interests and can build detailed user profiles. However, Google does not clarify what users pay when they share their personal and professional interests with the search engine provider. Google's value proposition towards users thus is not sustainable alone because providing search engine results involves monetary costs but generates no direct revenue. Therefore, Google offers a second, 
explicit value proposition directed toward the firms that want to promote their products online. Employing an auction-based pricing mechanism, Google sells AdWords to these firms. The links appear next to the search results whenever users' queries include the purchased AdWords terms. Thus, in its explicit value proposition, Google offers space for targeted promotions in return for monetary compensation that captures advertising firms' reservation price. A third value proposition linking the advertising firm with the search engine user is required to create a viable value constellation. Firms recover their AdWord spending by selling their products at a profit to search engine users, thereby creating a triadic value proposition constellation that connects the search engine provider, the search engine user, and the advertising firm. There are three ways of improving the value proposition. One, from product to recurring service, is the shift from manufacturing and or buying and selling products toward providing a recurring service. Selling products on a transactional basis requires a continuous effort for every sale, and it is often unpredictable. Recurring services require upfront customer acquisition costs that lead to recurring revenues. Revenues become more predictable and grow exponentially because you build on top of a continuously growing base of customers. Two, from low-tech to high-tech, is the shift from BRASIC, often labor-intensive, low-tech value propositions toward technology-based value propositions. This shift allows scaling reach and increasing price, which leads to a boost in revenues. The increase in price and revenues compensates for new technology-related costs and often leads to higher margins. Three, from sales to platform, is the shift from value chain activities and selling products toward products that become a platform for third-party products and value-added services. Value increases for customers because they don't just purchase a product, but buy into a platform ecosystem. The value for third-party product and service providers is access to a customer base. Platforms are harder to disrupt than simple products because they create resource castles network effects. Let me give you an example for the second case, a shift from the value proposition from low-tech to high-tech. The example comes from the company Netflix. In 1998, Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph launched Netflix as an online DVD rental service. They believed it was the right product and service for the Internet at that time. Yet, from the start, the founders had a vision of a video streaming platform. Netflix invested 1-2% to of its revenue downloading services, waiting patiently to transform its business model towards streaming with increasing internet bandwidth. In 2007, Netflix shifts from a mail-order DVD rental company to an online streaming platform when internet speeds up and consumer devices align with the founder's vision of movies on the internet. Therefore, Netflix moves from labor-intensive activities, such as shipping and logistics, to tech activities, such as streaming platform development and maintenance. This is the moment when the shift from low-tech to high-tech took place. Software and network engineering skills become central. Customer viewing data and recommendation algorithms gain even more importance with the shift to streaming. Data drives content investment decisions and helps customers find relevant content. As a consequence of that shift, revenues grew tenfold in the following decade. By 2018, 96% of revenue came from streaming. By the way, Netflix adapted its business model again in 2013 and began producing original content. Today, Netflix has more than 200 million paying customers.